Here now is Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells with Talk to Tom. All right, all right, all right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Talk to Tom. I'm Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells bringing you a live edition of Talk to Tom this Thursday, August 31st. Normally, we take your questions and answer what you want to know. I mean, that's what the whole show is built around. But this evening, we're going to do something a little bit different in the wake of the hurricane. We're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at what it's like to cover a storm like this, both in the field and here in our newsroom, with News 6 meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, who spent 17 hours forecasting the hurricane on ClickOrlando.com, News 6 Plus app, and the News 6 YouTube channel. But first, we start with the man of the hour, our guy in the field, News 6 anchor and reporter, Eric Von Anken. Eric, welcome, man. You doing okay? You doing okay? <laughs> yeah, doing, <laughs> doing good, Tom. I, I don't know about the man of the hour. Oh. Um, after these three days, I'll, I'll take anything. All right, you <laughs> Just were glad there. to be awake and existing. Oh, you look good. I mean, for what you've been through, you, you look pretty good. You were in, in Perry. You were right in the height of the whole thing. You were right there, just on top of like where the eye was coming in. You were feeling the wrath as it made landfall 20 miles south of you with wind speeds of a buck 25, about 125 miles per hour. Let's go back there. Let's, let's think about that. Let's go back. At the height, you told us this is the worst you've ever seen. Elaborate on that. Tell me more. So at the time, yeah, definitely, Tom. And, you know, and, and I'm, I'm kidding around about, about being a little tired after three days. Those folks, I mean, they, they're, they're in the middle of it, right? Mm -hmm. So we... We pulled out and we headed here to Crystal River um, because, you know, we knew that there was a flooding issue here. Thank goodness the water has come down here. But those folks in Perry, I mean, already of them, they don't have much at all. So many of those folks, and and we, you know, we saw oh, just even at the hotel that we were staying at, some of the suffering. I mean, there was a a woman working at the hotel at the front desk and. <sighs> Her kids are living at the hotel with her, or at least we're staying there. She was trying to get a hold of her aunt, who lives, I think, in Steenhatchee, which is right near there, as you know, right on the water. Yeah. And she was refusing to leave. Her mother was mm -hmm. sick. She woke up the next morning. I mean, she was, you know, like, like physically uh, sick. I guess she's, you know, suffering from something. She needed the aunt to leave the house finally to come and pick her up to take her to the hospital because the lady working the front desk couldn't leave the hotel. They had no power. The, the whole hotel's a mess. I mean, you know, and, the, and the, the cleaning service is trying to get the rooms ready to help more people in there. They're working in the dark. They've been there all night. I mean, I, I you know, if if there's any guilt, I guess, that I carry a little bit with me, Tom, it's it's leaving those folks behind they need help you know i know that doesn't answer your question right but but th that That's is what's what sticking with me right yeah, now. i'm sure and, and at the height of that wind you had no idea how bad it was going to be i mean you didn't know if roofs were coming off for sure and then all of a sudden you get there let me ask you a question you, we've been you've been here 20 years right two decades we've been together right something like that i've been here 23 right. years yeah, and you've yeah, been here almost on. the whole time how many sure. times have we done this together any idea I mean, a lot. Yeah, you kept saying it's not you know, my first and, and rodeo. How many rodeos have we ridden, cowboy? <laughs> a, lot, a lot. You know, and, and I kept I kept joking around yesterday. I mean, you know, we've done this once or twice, but yeah, and and it probably it probably was the worst time in in that we were in the middle of it, right? So I think mm -hmm. I tried to explain this on air a little bit yesterday. It, it depends where you end up. And, and it's funny, because you and I have this conversation before Storm quite often. Where should we go? You know, where, where do we think it's gonna be bad? I mean, where do you th we think the eye's gonna end up? And, you know, you wanna guess right in, in a kind of a sick way, right? <laughs> because right. we wanna be there and bring pe people uh, pictures, you know, and, and try and cover it. That's our job, that's what we do. We try and try and be out there. But at the same time, you got to take a lot of things into account. You know, is there any infrastructure? Can we broadcast? I mean, you know, we ended up, we, we found a hotel in Perry. We didn't realize at the time the hotel wouldn't have a, a backup generator, which really is so important for us just to get the images out. So the, the cell phone signal uh, went down, cell phone service went down, internet went down. So at some point, you know, us going through the, all this effort to be there to try and broadcast, to show people what we're going through, it was useless. Right at the height for about a half hour, uh, Jeff's behind the camera, Jeff Seegers, who's done this all, uh, right. also a very long time, as you know. Yes. You know, he, he, Jeff said for that half hour, Tom, it, 
it was hairy. So that's when the wind direction started to change. When we were under that overhang, it was fine. I mean, you know, it was howling outside. Right. And, and it, it, you know, kind of roaring. But when the wind started to change and, and just everything started flying in the air, you know, that's when we, we thought, like, okay, we need to take cover. There was a, um, Jeff, was it an ice machine? It was a metal, big metal box kind of in the corner that at one point I was standing behind because, you know, stuff is starting to, to come down the alley way under that, that uh, overhang uh, right at us. And then, you know, you're realizing, well, you know, that doesn't really offer a whole, offer a whole no, lot of protection. Much, none, but my nothing. instinct, right, but my instinct <laughs> is broadcast, right, to show people what we're dealing with. So I'm like, I'm going to stay out here, which... You know, it goes against your better judgment. It, 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 there are really a lot of uh, things that we deal with out here. But for that half hour, we finally got into the truck, and stuff is pelting the truck. And I'm thinking to myself, is something coming through the windshield? And as Jeff said, maybe it's not coming through the windshield, but could it have cracked the windshield? Of course. Yeah, it really could. Okay, well, let's talk. One of the things that stuck out to me is that when you first started reporting yesterday, I talked to you live on the air. We were both on. And then you started driving around, and you're like, you know, it doesn't look that bad. And then you round a corner and go, oh, that looks bad. What, how, what stuck out to you about that? Because it was a differential from right where you're looking. Eh, the signs are still. But then you turn the corner, and all of a sudden you see the canopy damage. Roofs are gone. Trees are down. And, and I know you were here during Charlie. So my thought on the air was, this is going to look like Charlie to a lot of people because trees are going to be like boom and through roofs. Is that what you're finding? How does it compare to what you covered during Hurricane Charlie? Yeah, I think so, Tom. I think I think you're exactly right. Uh, you know, the, there are. I, I was listening to the governor today, and he was talking when during his press conference he had uh, emergency manager there, director of emergency manager, and they were talking <clears> how <throat> in that area, it's so different than most parts of Central Florida because to restore 10 miles of electrical wire, right? Like to get the power back on and to get 10 miles of that cable uh, back up and connected, maybe you get power back on to four people. Wow. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's so spread out and it's such a massive effort to try and get these wires all reconnected all over that, that area. But because people aren't concentrated, you're, you're not assisting enough people quickly enough, or, or a lot of, I should say, a lot of people uh, quickly enough. But yeah, there, there's a lot, also a lot of trees around there. I mean, it's, it's woods. Right. You can't even get from Perry very easily down to the, to the beach, to the Gulf. I mean, there's, there's one road, it's called Beach Road. Yeah, even on a regular day, it's a, a small lot. road, right? Even on a regular day, it's, it's a drive. Right. It's one small road, yeah. Right, exactly. And it's laid over yeah. and, and chopped but up. Carry on, I don't mean to interrupt you, I'm just trying to get it. Yeah. Okay, tell me about the difference between like Ian. You were waterside with Ian, and Ian for me and for everyone was more of a water event. This wasn't totally a water event. This was high wind event. Right, certainly in Perry, uh, mm -hmm. absolutely it was a high wind event because those people were, were so far inland. And, and you know, I, I think I said this on air a couple of times, and, and I really tried to say this uh, carefully because no storm going anywhere where people are is, is a good thing, right, ever. But, I, you know, I, I think we were blessed a little bit this time because it was not a populated area. I, I you know, I, I know the, da the uh, damage and devastation is widespread. Yes. But, I mean, if this had come over an area with tons of people living there and, and you know, houses like in, in, you know, on some of our coasts where, or you, you know, you got condos, right, all up and down the beach. And in some cases, people are going to choose not to evacuate. We saw that. So if you have that combination... You know, you're talking life, you're talking property at risk. The people who didn't evacuate, I think, Tom, were the ones who had just decided they'd been there so long. You know, many of them grew up there. Their, their grandparents I um, I don't like uh, it, moved I there it. and kind of established. Exactly. You know, they ain't going anywhere. I don't They're like it, to stay. but I understand. I, I don't like it. It's the last thing I want to see happen, but I do get it. Real quick, we're running out of time. We've got like 15 seconds left. Why did you pick Perry? 25 words because or less? you. <laughs> because Chief Meteorologist Tom Searle said go to Perry, and you yeah, were right. I was trying not to get you killed, but you said I want to be right in the eye. I'm like, oh, no, don't go to, don't go to there, don't go to Tallahassee. Go, go to Perry. I'd pick Perry. Lo and behold. Hey, Eric, you look good, man. I can't wait to get back here. Um, thank you so much for being my first ever live guest on Talk to Tom. Get back here, brother. Thank you, Tom. Great All job right. to you, too. Still ahead on this live edition of Talk to Tom, meteorologist Jonathan Kegis will join me to talk about his marathon stream.
keeping our viewers informed online before the storm, during and after. Welcome back. You're watching Talk to Tom live tonight. We're giving you a look at and what it takes to bring you hurricane coverage, both from those who are in the elements to those of us back here in the studio. We just spoke with News 6 anchor reporter Eric Von Anken about his experience covering Hurricane Adalia in the Big Bend region. Now, we turn to meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, who served our viewers on our digital platforms, giving them minute-by-minute -minute coverage on Adalia as it moved toward Florida, strengthening to a Category 4 storm, and coming ashore as a Cat 3. Jonathan, welcome. This is like, how many times have you been on Talk to Tom? Three, four, five? I think about that, yeah. <laughs> no, it's been a frequent, couple. Frequent visitor. Yeah, I think maybe. Um, I don't know who the most frequent guest was on the David Letterman show, but i got to get you a button. This is like, <laughs> I'm on Talk to Tom all the time. I'd Let, wear it. Let's, <laughs> let's talk about what, uh, what we're doing on social and YouTube. Why, why are we doing this this way now? Why? Because there's so many ways to get this content now. There's so many people watching on their phones. Even hurricane coverage. So many times in the comments, we'll, we'll get to some of those in a little bit. They said, all right, we've got, we've got Tom on TV here. We've got you on the YouTube stream. And uh, we also have the thing going on on Netflix over here where we're watching it. So there's uh, so many different ways uh, to kind of get this content. And uh, it's just, it's a different way. It's an interactive way. You see some of the comments right there. Uh, popping up on the video that you're seeing on your screen here. It's a way to have a direct connection. I mean, Tom, you kind of, you always say this in, in your open, you kind of started this back in Charlie in 2004, and it's kind of evolved now off of the television, off of calling in to now being able to have this interaction uh, in the palm of your hand. It's crazy. It is great. You know, we got to get you a name, and, and we can't call it Talk to Someone. We're going to be jiving with Jonathan or, or something. We got to come up with a name for you. Something. You can come up with it. Yeah. All right, let's talk about that. Like um, last year during Ian, when I was doing Talk to Tom on TV, uh, we had people calling from like South Dakota yeah. and all around, you know, because we got picked up on direct TV and sent everywhere. And people were calling from South Carolina. How many people out of market were you hitting and, and how many people did we serve? How many did you get to? All right, so this was crazy. There were uh, about 350,000 people. We're at last checked, it's up to 348,000 people that tuned into this live stream uh, over that 17-hour stretch that we were on. There were a lot of people uh, from out of state, of course. There were a lot of people locally in the Central Florida area toward the Big Bend and Panhandle area where the storm was going. But there were a lot of people checking in to see because they had family members in the way right. and they either didn't leave. So there were, we had people from uh, way out of state, as you mentioned, all across the country uh, checking, hey, what's the latest with this? Uh, we couldn't get in touch with, uh, with our son or daughter in college in Tallahassee uh, because power went out. And they were asking where the storm was now. So we were able to, they found the stream, mm -hmm. and we were able to have that communication with people that were worried about some of the loved ones that they had in the storm's path. Yeah, and that's different. I mean, I'm on TV. Yeah. Maybe I could take a question or two, but I can't take the questions of 300,000 people. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. What were some of the biggest concerns? You said other family members, but, like, what, what kind of questions were they asking exactly? What was the, say, just say, what was the most popular question, for example? The most popular question, is this going to be an Ian? Is this going to be a Charlie? Is it going to make that hard right turn like both of those storms do? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, Tom, you were here in, when Charlie happened. You were obviously here when Ian happened, too. And that leaves a mark when a storm is that close to your coast and that close to coming near, to near central Florida. And it's happened twice mm -hmm. since 2004. Obviously, this was a big one, too. And, I mean, you don't wish the storm on anybody, of course. But when you are in that local area and it's happened, that was the number one thing. The other thing, too, was, is the storm going to loop back? Uh, right. Because <laughs> models started showing it, it, that curve back off of yeah. South Carolina. Right. Is it going to hit us again? The answer, of course, no. Can it happen? Yeah, Ivan did that weird thing, but it was just a shell of itself back in also 2004. But, yeah. Yeah, that was Ivan that. 2004. And we had um, Charlie Francis. Gene did that. Gene yeah. went out and did a loop and came back. We, some people thought Gene was gone. And I did an interview with a, a newspaper lady, and she was like, uh, what are you doing this Saturday? I said, I'm watching football, but, you know, I'm not sure we're done with Gene. And she said, why do you say that? I said, well, you know, it could always, it's going to hit a ridge. It may come back. Mm -hmm. And she goes, well, the Hurricane Center doesn't say that. I said, well, no, they're not saying it yet, but I just know long-range models could. And sure enough, here we were a week later, you know, we did yeah. it. So, yeah, it's, I understand people questioning that. Also, the other night, when, when it didn't have an eye, and it was on TV, I looked up and said, these models could be junk. 
We could have junk in, junk out. Tomorrow morning, we'll know. And then the eye wall developed, and sure enough, it was right where we thought it would be. That's all great. What, what time, what was the scariest time for people? Was it when it shot to Category 4? Did you get a lot of action then? Or was it when it was coming up closer to our coast? What do you think was the worst time for people? Yeah, I think we started popping those tornado warnings early in the morning, at least for the inland areas as well. That started to, to become a, a scary point. And then, of course, as, as we are watching this thing, and, uh, okay, it was a Category 1, I, I think that time frame from we had a lot of comments on was there wasn't an eye, and then all of a sudden there was. I mean, you know rapid intensification, and mm -hmm. all, all of a sudden it goes from just this big cloud mass to now, oh, all right, it, it looks like something. And I, and I think that was, was it there, and still... Um, even when it was north of the Orlando area, because like as we've talked about before, we had uh, a bunch of questions. They're like, okay, is it is it going to wobble this way? Is it going to wobble that way? I mean, I was with you when you were talking to uh, the former NHC director, and he said wobbles matter. And I mean, all the way up until landfall, is, is it is it going to turn? Is it is it going to come back? And, and I think that was the scariest time when you start to get that eye on there, and it starts to look mean. All right, so I felt um, a lot of love from um, viewers and commenters. Not as much anger this time. People were generally grateful. Yeah. I really believe. What did anyone thank you? Like, hey, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for being here. Any of that? Yeah, you know, there there was a lot of it. Um, I, a very nice person emailed this morning too, but. I, they were appreciative of, of the, I think, the longevity. That was what they were, yeah. they, you know, people went to bed, woke back up, we were still on. And I think that was the number one thing because having a conversation, and, th and this was the, the thing that stuck out to me, they said being able to actually, you know, get information during the storm was the thing that kind of put them at ease to know that it wasn't going to turn. We, you know, there were meteorological reasons for why this was not going to be an Ian or well, it's going to be Charlie. Obviously, there's, mm. obvi there's unexpected things that happen. It's weather. We all know that. But this time around, there was a big meteorological reason for why that thing did not go that way and come right into the peninsula. I also think that, that it's good for people to be able to see you on their phone. Mm. You know, you're streaming through the app. You're streaming through YouTube. You're streaming through everything. And so if their power goes out, the house is dark, the cable's gone, or the off-air signal's gone for them, Phone, you're mm -hmm. right there. I love that. Any other interesting stories or anecdotes that happened during the whole time? I don't know. I mean, all right. So <laughs> uh, th there were some interesting questions, uh, I, and I think it, it kept the stream going. Um, people wanted to know if I was going to the bathroom. <laughs> um, yeah. They were, uh, there were debates on what I was doing. whenever. Because, I, I, okay, I couldn't go 17 straight hours with talking. I would have lost my voice. Oh, yeah. You have to take a break. You, you have get, to take, get, a, take a break. Some and water. When right. there were some lulls in the action, for sure. Uh, so that was interesting. I mean, there was a, a lot of people active in the G, which I, which I appreciate. And I, and I think, you know, to, to some of the points there about kind of putting it at ease, you, you can't, I mean, doom and gloom, you can't, you can't be that. There's got to be some kind of, uh, you know, some relief. Levity, right. Right, exactly, exactly. We know what's coming. You know you can't stop it. The thing you have to do is just, hey, this is what's going on. You know, bring the science side, bring the meteorology side in it, but to, to do it in a, in a lighthearted way, too, just to, but. To be serious and lighthearted at the same time. I don't even know if there's a word for that, but um, I, th I think that's I think that's it. I think that's it, Tom. Okay, uh, down to one of our last questions. Okay. We're running out of time. We only got about 40 seconds for you to answer. Why do you think it's so important for me to be on the broadcast and you to be on the digital platform at the same time? All right, great question. So this is a, a, a perfect thing. So we were cranking those tornado warnings out. What was it? Early Wednesday morning. We had right. four or five at a time. Mm -hmm as the storm was coming on shore. So I was actually pulling your feed over from New Six and I was talking about, okay, if you're in the central Florida area, we, we, were, we were showing people different things. We were getting into the velocity mode as it is, the different changing of the winds to show them there was wind shear there. And I was like, hey, if you're in the central Florida area, make sure you're turning in the New Six. Chief Neurologist Tom Soros was on with Candace and Troy. Uh, get over there. And then we were able to hop back up to the panhandle where they just issued that excessive uh, or extreme wind warning, that rare warning they get. You have to treat it like a tornado uh, warning because all that wind is coming in. So we were able to bounce back and, hey, check in on Tom. All right, I got to go, Jonathan. They're making me wrap up. I could talk to you guys all night here, but we have another newscast to do at 6. Thank you for being here, my man. Thank and you. thank you at home for watching this live edition of Talk to Tom. You can check us out anytime, free on News 6+. Plus. Just download the app on your smart TV and start watching. Thank you for being here.